Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Friday the 25th of January 2019. I'm Darren Sindon and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. Okay, let's take a look then at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of this morning. Um, a bit busier on the world's foreign exchanges uh, yesterday, I think it's fair to say, and we did see some pretty decent moves, uh, led, in fact, by the pound sterling, GBP, against the US dollar, uh, the pound gaining 0.44% on the session to trade at 131.21.20, shortly before we recorded the video. Um, a very impressive performance from sterling. We'll look at the reasons behind that a little later on in the video. Uh, the Chinese... Uh, yuan pushed back against the US dollar, taking 0.23% off of the US currency. It wasn't alone um, in making gains against the dollar yesterday either. Uh, the Canadian dollar and the Mexican peso both taking 0.18% off of the US currency. Dollar index for its part uh, losing ground down by around 0.19% to trade at 96.42 before we went live with the video. And as you know, I've been looking for directional cues for the dollar index. Um, perhaps some of the strength in euro uh, and the British pound starting to rub off here. Um, will we retest 96? Probably not today, uh, but maybe that's something we can look for in the early part of next week. OK, what's on the calendar? Events that may move the markets today. To be fair, it's a pretty light calendar today. We've got the final day at the World Economic Forum in Davos, of course. Uh, and to come at 9 a.m. GMT this morning, we will have the IFO expectations, current assessment and business climate survey data uh, from Germany for the month of January. Now, we saw some better uh, looking data out of the rival ZEW survey earlier in the week. Will we see a pickup in sentiment uh, among uh, the German business community from the IFO survey data that remains to be seen, of course. At 9.30 a.m., we shall have in the UK British, Bank British Bankers Association mortgage approvals data for the month of December. And that will be followed at 11 a.m. by some more UK data in the form of the CBI Distributed Trade Survey uh, for the month of January. And then a significant pause until uh, 1800 GMT this evening when we'll have the Baker Hughes US rig oil rig count, I should say, uh, a, a look at the number of active drilling rigs uh, operating in the USA in the past week. And then at 1900, we're scheduled to have uh, the US monthly budget statement for December. Uh, I wonder, though, if that release will also fall foul of the ongoing US government shutdown. OK, breaking news and comment then that's caught my eye overnight. And first of all, the British pound has strengthened as chances of a no-deal Brexit recede, at least in the mind of the market. Uh, the pound has had its best week for a year, uh, if it finishes where it is right now. Um, yes, the, the waters do seem to be clearing slightly, but of course, uh, I won't take anything for granted where Brexit is concerned. Um, trying to, to judge the minor politicians is a very tricky thing for the market to do. Meanwhile, speaking of politicians, a U.S. congressional committee uh, will summon leaders of America's top six banks to Washington to examine their post-global financial crisis performance, says the FT. So the Democrats in the House of Representatives started to flex their muscles and take aim at some of the things that they consider to be wrong uh, or have, that have gone wrong over the last decade or so. Meanwhile, uh, at Davos, George Soros warned on the use of artificial intelligence by repressive regimes uh, and uh, singled out the Chinese for criticism in this regard. Meanwhile, Mexican economic activity uh, slowed to growth of just 1.8% in November, a sharp drop from October's 2.9% read, but well above the forecasts for that figure of just plus 1.2%. OK, then food for thought, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. Why not think about this? The question I'd like to ask here is what's happening in global trade? Uh, and we've got four uh, key charts here from uh, Goldman Sachs and a report that they've done on uh, transport, um, which serves as a proxy for global trade. Um, so we'll just take a look at these in, in order. First of all, uh, a chart plotting uh, freight volumes uh, by air and sea. Um, volumes of freight from the sea are up actually 2% uh, uh, over uh, recent months, um, but uh, air freight volumes have been declining and it's not been an easy time for the global air, airline industry. Passenger numbers uh, and profitability have been, have been problematic there and obviously they won't want to see freight volumes falling, but nonetheless there's some room for optimism here with uh, sea freight volumes heading higher. 
the next chart looks at uh, China port volumes and export orders. Unfortunately for uh, the global markets, these are seen as being weak. You can see both uh, these lines trending lower uh, and have been since the summer, uh, suggesting really that this boost in uh, sea freight volumes not coming from the Chinese economy. Uh, and this, uh, this type of chart helps to explain why people are concerned about the slowdown in Chinese economic activity. We've also seen uh, a sharp drop in the new orders component of the US ISM. That's an alternative measure of uh, PMI activity uh, and as you can see uh, there's been a sharp fall off. Some suggestion uh, that that may be uh, a seasonal factor and uh, and that we'll see that reversed next Friday uh, when we have the release of the latest ISM reading alongside uh, US non-farm payroll so watch out for that. Um, and then the final chart here a look at uh, US intermodal volumes and what intermodal means in this instance is uh, freight containers moved by train road uh, ships and other means. Uh, and this is plotted against industrial production. Uh, industrial production in the grey uh, in the US uh, flatlining uh, and the intermodal volumes of, or volumes of containers moving around in different forms uh, start starting to dip. So suggesting perhaps as well that it's not the US demand that's driving this rise in sea freight volumes. So that's encouraging for the rest of the world perhaps but uh, we'll need to watch closely what happens with this chart uh, and this one going forward. Right. It's risk warning time. Please take a moment to read this risk warning. Trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business. If you're uncertain about those risks or the use of leverage products for you, then please do contact your Pepperstone account representative. And as I say, do take the time to read this risk warning thoroughly. Thank you for your time this morning.